Hello, Mark. My name is May from Sophomore, and my student number is forty-five. Today, I'm going to read an article called "How We Can Eat Our Landscapes" by Pam Warhurst. The will to live life differently can start in some of the most unusual places. This is where I come from, Todd Morden. It's a market town in the north of England, fifteen thousand people between Leeds and Manchester. Fairly normal market town. It used to look like this, and now it's more like this, with fruit and veg and herbs sprouting up all over the place. We call it propaganda gardening. Laughter. Corner row railway station car park, front of a health center, people's front gardens, and even in front of the police station. Laughter. We've got edible canal towpaths. And we've got sprouting cemeteries. The soil is extremely good. Laughter. We've even invented a new form of tourism. It's called vegetable tourism. And believe it or not, people come from all over the world to poke around in our raised beds, even when there's not much growing. Laughter. But it starts a conversation. Laughter. And you know we are not doing it because we are bored. We are doing it because we want to start a revolution. We try to answer this simple question: Can you find a unifying language that cuts across age, and income, and culture that will help people themselves find a new way of living, see spaces around them differently, think about the resources they use differently, interact differently? Can we find that language, and then can we replicate those actions? And the answer would appear to be yes. And the language would appear to be food. So, three and a half years ago, a few of us sat around a kitchen table and we just invented the whole thing. Laughter, applause. We came up with a really simple game plan that we put a public meeting. We did not consult. We did not write a report. Enough of all that. Laughter. And we said to the public meeting in Todd Marden, "Look, let's imagine our." That our town is focused around three pl- plates: a community place, the way we live our everyday lives, a learning place, what we teach our kids in school, and what new skills we share amongst ourselves, and business, what we do with the pound in our pocket, and which business we choose to support. Now let's imagine those plates agitated with community actions around food. If we start one of those community plates spinning, <coughs> that's really great. Let's really start to empower people. But if we can then spin that community plate with the learning plate, and then spin it with the business plate, we've got a real show there. We've got some action theater. We are starting to build resilience ourselves. We are starting to reinvent community ourselves. And we've done it all without a flipping strategy document. Applause. And here's the thing as well: we've got, we have not asked anybody's permission to do this. We are just doing it. Laughter. And we are certainly not waiting for that check to drop through the letter box before we start. And most importantly of all, we are not daunted by the sophisticated argument that say these small actions are meaningless. In the face of tomorrow's problems, because I have seen the power of small actions, and it is awesome. So back to the public meeting. Laughter. We put that proposition to the meeting. Two seconds, and then the room exploded. I have never ever experienced anything like that in my life, and it's been the same in every single room. In every town that we have ever told our story, people are ready and respond to the story of food. They want positive actions they can engage in and in their bones. They know it's time to take personal responsibility and invest in more kindness to reach other, to each other, and to the environment. And since we had that meeting three and a half years ago, it's been a heck of a roller coaster. We started with the seed swap, really simple stuff, and then we took an area of land, a strip. On the side of our main road, which was a dog toilet, basically, and we turned it into a really lovely herb garden. 
we took the corner of the car park in the station that you saw and we made vegetable beds for everybody to share and pick from themselves we went to the doctors we have just had a six million pound health center built in Todmorden and for some reason that I cannot comprehend it has been surrounded by prickly plants laughter so we went to the doctor said would you mind us taking them up they said absolutely fine provided you get planning permission and you do it in Latin and you do it in triple K so we did laughter and now there are fruit trees and bushes and herbs and vegetables around that doctor's surgery and there's been a Lots of other examples, like the corn that was in front of the police station and the old people's home that we have planted it with food that they can pick and grow. But it isn't just about growing because we all are part of this jigsaw. It's about taking those artistic people in your community and doing some fabulous designs in those raised beds to explain to people what's growing there because they're so many people that don't really recognize a vegetable unless it's in a bit of plastic with a bit of an instruction packet on the top laughter so we have some people who design these things if it look like this please don't pick it but if it look like this help yourself this is about sharing and investing in kindness and for those people that don't want to do either of those things maybe they can cook so we pick them seasonally and then we go on the street or in the pub or in, ch in the church or wherever people are living their lives. This is about us going to the people and saying, we are all part of the local food jigsaw. We are all part of the solution. And then because we know we've got vegetable tourists and we love them to beat and they're absolutely fantastic, we thought, what could we do to give them an even better experience? So we invented without asking. Of course, the incredible edible green root, and this is a root of exhibition gardens, and edible tow paths, and bee-friendly sites, and the story of pollinators, and it's a route that we designed that takes people through the whole of our town, past our cafes and our small shops, through our market, not just to find not just to and fro from the supermarket and we are hoping that in changing people's footfall around our town we are also changing their behavior and then there's the second plate the learning plate well we are in partnership with the high school we have created a company we are designing and building an aquaponics unit in some land that was spare at the back of the high school like you do and now we are going to be growing fish and vegetables in an orchard, orchard with bees and the kids are helping us build that and the kids are on the board and because the community was really keen really mean on working with the high school the high school is now teaching agriculture and because it's teaching agriculture, we started to think, how could we then got those kids that never had a qualification before in their lives, but are really excited about growing? How can we give them some more experience? So we got some land that was donated by a local gardener garden center. It was really quite muddy, but in a truly incredible way, totally voluntary led. We have turned that into a market garden training center. And... That is polytunnels and raised beds and all the things you need to, got to get the soil under your fingers and think maybe there's a job in this for me in the future. And because we are doing that, some local academic says, you know, we could help design a commercial horticulture course for you. There's not one that we know of. So they are doing that and we are going to launch it later this year. And it's all an experiment and it's all voluntary. And then there's the third plate because if you walk through an edible landscape and if you are learning new skills and if you start to get interested in what's growing seasonally, you might just want to spend more of your own money in support of local producers. 
not just bag, but meat and cheese and beer and whatever else it might be. But then we're just community group, you know. We're just all volunteers. What could we actually do? So we did some really simple things. We fundraised. We got some blackboards and we put incredible edible on the top. We gave it every market trader that was selling locally and they scribble on what they were selling in any one week. Really popular. People congregated around it. Sales were up. And then we had a chat with the farmers and we said, we're really serious about this, but they didn't actually believe us. So we thought, okay, what should we do? I know if we can create a campaign around one product and show them there is local loyalty to that product, maybe they'll change their mind and see we're serious. So we launched a campaign because it just amuses me called Every Act Matters Laughter. And what we did was we put people on our act map. It's stylized. It's a stylized map on of Talk Martin. Anybody that's selling their excess eggs at the garden gate perfectly legally to their neighbors with stock on there. We started with four and we've now got 64 on. And the result of that was that people were then going into shops asking for a local Todd Martin egg. And the result of that was some farmers opt the amount of flocks they got of free range birds and then they went on to meet birds. And although these are really, really small steps, that increasingly local economy confidence is starting to play out in a number of ways. And we now have farmers doing cheese and they have upped their flocks and rare breed pigs. They are doing pastas and pies and things that they would have never done before. We've got increasing market stalls selling local food. And in the survey that local students did for us, 49% of all food traders in that town say that their bottom line had increased because of what we are actually doing. And we are just volunteers and it's only an experiment. Laughter. Now, none of this is rocket silence. It certainly is not clever and it's not original. But it is joined up and it is inclusive. This is not a movement for those people that are doing that are going to sort themselves out anyway. This is a movement for everyone. We have a motto. If you eat, you are in. Laughter. Applause. Across age, across income, across culture. It's been really quite a roller coaster experience. But going back to that first question that we asked, is it replicable? Yeah, it's most certainly is replicable. More than 30 towns in England now are spinning the, the incredible edible plate. Whichever way they want to do it, of their own volition. They are trying to make their own lives differently and worldwide. We've got communities across America and Japan. It's incredible, isn't it? I mean, America and Japan and New Zealand, people after the earthquake in New Zealand visited us in order to incorporate some of this public spiritedness around local growing into the heart of Christ Church. And none of this takes more money and none of this demands a bureaucracy. But it does demand that you think things differently and you are prepared to ban budgets and work programs in order to create that supportive framework that communities can bounce off. And there are some great ideas already in our patch. Our local authority has decided to make everywhere incredible edible and in support of that have decided to do two things. First, they are going to create an asset register of spare land that they have got. Put it in a food bank so that communities can use that wherever they did. And they are going to underpin that with a license. And then they have said to every single one of their workforce. If you can, help those communities grow. 
and help them to maintain their spaces. Suddenly, we are seeing actions on the ground from local government. We are seeing this mainstream. We are responding creatively at last to what Rio demanded of us, and there's lots more you could do. I mean, just to list a few. One, please stop putting prickly plants around public buildings. It's a waste of space, laughter. Secondly, please create, please, please create edible landscapes so that our children start to walk past their food day in, day out, on our high street, in our parks, wherever that might be. Inspire local planners to put the food sites at the heart of the town and the city plan, not relegate them to the edges of the settlements that nobody can see. Encourage all our schools to take this seriously. This isn't second class exercise. If we want to inspire the farmers of tomorrow, then please let us say to every school, create a sense of purpose around the importance to the environment, local food and soils. Put that at the heart of your school culture and you will create a different generation. There are so many things you can do, but ultimately this is about something really simple. Through an organic process, through an increasing recognition of the power of small actions, we are starting at this, to believe in ourselves again, and to believe in our capacity, each and every one of us, to build a different and a kinder future. And in my book, that's incredible. Thank you. Applause. Applause. Thank you very much. Applause. This is the end of my recording. Thank you.